Hey there, Bob from Morgan's Constant Gardener here. So on Friday we had Newton. Newton Hayes from SLF 100 was here. Scott was there too. It was super, super fun. And uh, this is a little segment from uh, the presentation he gave. I kind of got two different 3D models of, of an enzyme. This is an amylase enzyme, both models. One model is showing you um, I'm trying to show you the different amino acids as they combine in, into that 3D form, which uh, creates an amylase enzyme. Um, the other one is kind of showing you a little bit more structure. Um, an enzyme is a protein chain that is created within a cell, a living, a living cell, um, not just an acid. Um, but it's actually a, a protein chain that's created within a cell to catalyze a reaction or to speed up a biochemical reaction. Um, and denaturing an enzyme um, would be to take it out of that form somewhat. Um, heating an enzyme and, and pH issues are what would denature an enzyme um, and cause it to not um, not retain that structure that's, that's necessary uh, for the reaction. So if you think of an enzyme, uh, you think of an enzyme as basically a puzzle piece. Um, and a puzzle piece can come into two substrates to combine two, two substrates, or it can come into one substrate to, um, to react either by hydrolysis or, or reductase to break apart that substrate. Um, so, um what I learned in the Master Food Preserver program is you have to boil your vegetables before you put them in the freezer. Mm. And I think that's similar to what you were talking about. Um, is that denaturing an enzyme? Uh, yeah. Um, you will denature an enzyme. Anything over, um, I think it's uh, about 120 degrees, okay. um, will denature an enzyme. Um, so yes, um, boiling them before preserving them, you are destroying the enzyme. If you were to freeze that food without boiling it, um, and that food thaws out, there is no denaturing in that enzyme. That enzyme will um, not reanimate. It's not alive. Proteins are not alive, but it'll, it'll retain that structure, and it'll be just as useful as it was before it was frozen. Um, so, uh, enzymes and enzyme fallacies, you know, I'm kind of, uh, one part of me wants to address some issues of enzymes due to um, marketing issues. Um, I think we tend to um, say that acids are, are enzymes, um, amino acid chains, uh, chains of proteins, and acids being a little bit different, acids are um, a, a molecular structure with uh, more hydrogen ions on the outside creating an acid that's actually um, breaking things down to a point of making a soup like hydrochloric acid in your stomach. It's making a soup. Um, it's not actually going and breaking those substrates to either build up or, or, or to finish breaking down that substrate of lipids and fats and carbohydrates. Um, so there have been some, uh, some fallacies, I think, just through, um, in, just through greed in general, I think, um, to generalize enzymes for anything that, that catalyzes a reaction. Um, and that's not, um, we've heard of different enzyme tests um, and these tests don't necessarily mean that enzymes are present or if it's just an acid. Um, I would, uh, uh, in order to actually have an enzyme assay, um, there's a lot more that goes into it than just dropping a piece of paper in an acid overnight and, and watching it dissolve. Um, Sorry, um, I just wanted to address that just a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of concerned with the way things have gone, that um, some of the, the marketing has uh, driven us to um, 
think of some things as if uh, it, it just isn't true. I was going to ask you, what does the SLF stand for? SLF stands for Submerged Liquid Fermentation, um, and that's kind of what I wanted to get into next. Um, in our process of fermentation, or um, before our process of fermentation, we we start with a uh, set species of microbes in order to kick off a fermentation. Um, but we pull plants from from extreme environments um, to start a ferment, uh, a submerged liquid fermentation, a lot like um, you would for sauerkraut or uh, something similar. Um, but the array of plant material that we bring in, we bring in the whole plant with the root. Um, every part of the plant is then uh, fermented with that set species, species of microbes. Um, those microbes um, live and die, they, they eat. Um, they break down um, all the plant matter, the roots, the, the fibers, the carbohydrates, uh, breaking them down into simple um, proteins, sugars. Um, and in that process, plants, so the next slide was your basic prokaryotic cell and your eukaryotic cell. And eukaryotic cells are anything with a nucleus. Um, a defined nucleus and prokaryotic are your bacteria basically um, that don't have a, uh, a defined nucleus or nucleotides um, for their DNA. Um, every, every cell produces proteins and proteins are really for um, every metabolic function of the plant. Um, you have transport proteins, um, you have proteins uh, for boosting immune system, for uh, pathogenic resistance. Um, and everything, all, all your enzymes are produced in your ribosomes. And I wanted to kind of just have everybody see, you know, maybe everybody already has, but uh, the difference between the two cells. So your ribosomes in a eukaryotic cell are all attached to your endoplasmic reticulum. Um, there are some floating free in the cytoplasm as well. Um, and in a eukaryotic or a prokaryotic cell, um, all your all your ribosomes are floating free. So both <coughs> plants and bacteria in that fermentation process both have protein chains, enzymes, um, yeah. all for uh, the metabolic pathways of growth and development. Um, so in the process of fermentation, um, it's the, the Bacteria are dying, releasing enzymes. They're consuming the plant, which is and then also releasing enzymes and, and proteins. Um, so yeah, uh, our process uh, was kind of um, when the history of SLF. We moved into um, my family creates. I I, I didn't create SLF 100, just for the record. Uh, my family created it, and they live in Texas. Um, they, they moved into a ranch that was polluted by um, salts from uh, uh, oil production, oil um, pumping oil from the ground. Uh, they use salt water to pump oil from the ground. It infects the land. The land then becomes uh, filled with salts, uh, high EC contents that would take um, eons really to, to remediate. Um, so moving into this land, they um, decided they wanted a, an organic approach to remediating the, the salt-infected land and the hydrocarbon-infected land. So they went, um, uh, they worked on creating what is SLF 100. And the idea behind SLF 100 is, is really kind of the same ideas that um, Dr. Tara Higa uh, who created EM1, um, and uh, Dr. Cho, who's um, uh, behind Natural Korean Farming. Um, the Dr. Terahuga, uh, I don't know, uh, I apologize if anybody already, already knows all this, but uh, Dr. Terahuga was studying a uh, singular species of bacteria and trying to find out which bacteria um, would produce agriculturally um, the best. 
And in those studies of singular bacteria, uh, he wasn't finding the outcomes that he wanted to see. Uh, at the end of the day, he would throw his uh, singular species into a bucket. Over time, the bucket filled up with a consortium of bacteria that he wound up throwing out in his yard. Um, that grass overproduced it. any other grass um, that was around. And the idea was the consortium. And the consortium is um, really the idea that bacteria communicate. Um, bacteria work together to um, to overcome obstacles um, and produce enzymes together um, to overcome the breakdown um, and the combating of pathogens and different issues um, for the growth of, of plants in general. Um, let's see. So it takes about um, in that consor in our consortium, our consortium is a consortium of enzymes. It's not just a one base enzyme. Uh, we don't go for just cellulase, just amylase. We want that consortium. It takes about 66 enzymes to break down proteins. Um, so given just one, you're going to get to a point and then you're going to be stuck. <clears throat> you're not going to go anywhere. Um, and then the list goes on and on, breaking down carbohydrates, you're breaking down the polysaccharide chains, uh, turning it into basic sugars. But that process is, you know, starting with the cellulase enzyme, moving to um, uh, the maltase enzymes that take maltose, um, and then moving down to your, your gluconase uh, enzymes to finally break out uh, glucose or uh, glucose and fructose. So there's not just one enzyme involved in breaking down bone meal or... Um, you want to show that third slide? Did you down down? Down? <laughs> uh, yeah, I just kind of... How did I... I just wanted it's to get... It's not for you to see, but we'll try to get it on film. I just wanted to kind of give an idea of the classes of enzymes, and these are just the classes. So you have uh, six classes that are then broken down into subclasses that are then broken down into um, actual, you know, um, the actual enzymes. So when you're talking uh, enzymes, I, I, I'm not an enzymologist. Uh, anybody asked me specifics about uh, enzymes, there's just so many. I know some, um, but this, you know, an oxidoreductase uh, oxidizes or reduce, um, removes uh, oxygen or hydrogen or, or gains a hydrogen or oxygen. Hydrolase, we deal with a lot in, um, in plant material, uh, hydrolysis, addition of water. So each one has something different each class is something different, each class can be broken down into subclasses, each subclass can be broken down into each individual enzyme. So we're talking thousands of enzymes that um, you can spend a lifetime trying to, trying to know something about some. Um, I think the human body at any given time has about 75,000 enzymes at work. Um, and those are just enzymes. Um, if you're talking proteins, it's just astronomical. Um, that's basically our idea of SLF 100, um, having the consortium um, so that we can break down the lipids and the, the polymers that uh, develop and cause clogging in hydroponics. Um, you know, your, your outer layer that's attaching to surfaces and causing issues um, is what's going to be broken down first by the enzymes. Um, 